Living in Miami means stepping into a wonder world where having a good time seems to count more than anything else. So what else could you possibly add to this lovely city? I know, a boat trip. But not any old boat trip. This is the Outer Limits SL36. Outer Limits is the name of the boatyard. The 36 stands for the length in feet, the equivalent of about 11 meters. The logo is SL. You won't believe it, but this boat is built in Bristol, Rhode Island, in America. But they chose the SL logo to stand for Super Light. The same logo as in Lamborghini Gallardo LP570 has. Super Light. Come Lamborghini, Outer Limits produce barche solo di altissime prezzi. Like Lamborghini, Outer Limits produces only top performing boats. Based on this, they've tried to bring the center of gravity as low as possible, as the precision of the route and stability depend on it, as well as easy control, which is imperative to push it beyond all limits, outer limits, in fact. Then, obviously, there are the many fascinating characteristics that come along with it, like the luxuriousness, the attention to detail, even the mechanical details, for example, components which are typically used to build planes. Look how the dashboard is finished. Every piece is special. It has air vents made of carbon and super light hinges. Look at the instruments. They aren't the norm, but they are the same as a racing boat, and that's why it's special. And the armchairs? Just look at them. From the footrest up, and the chairs for the passengers too, anatomical, padded, for protection where it's needed. But there's no pulling the wool over your eyes, is there? These aren't the things that make a sporty boat. To understand if it's really worth its Lamborghini name, we need to check out four things, three of which we can see right away. One, two, three, four, five. Steps on the Opera Viva. No, that's too many. It's the other boatyards that don't have enough. And don't put so many in because it's difficult knowing how and where to put them. The second fundamental element for an extreme boat like this one is how it's built. Using carbon fiber and vacuum epoxy resin laminate has created a strong yet light boat. Super light, in fact. This is the best, what we'd expect from any of the best builders. But Outer Limits does more. When the boat is ready, it's treated once more in an oven, which is controlled by a computerized system that tries to eliminate aging problems that could be caused by atmospheric elements and the sun. The third fundamental is the propulsion. You need powerful and light engines. Weight is the main enemy when it comes to speed for any vehicle. These are two Mercury 520s. Can you hear the noise? It's an explosion of power. You can hear the petrol explode in the cylinders. Have you ever heard anything like it? It's like Indianapolis or Monza. These are 8.6 litres with V8 cylinder engines. Sequential fuel injection systems which weigh 533 kilos each, practically a kilo per horsepower. The propulsion system is finished off at the foot of the stern in a racing way, naturally with a counter-rotating double propeller. The rotation speed of the propellers, i.e. how fast they go forward in the water for every turn in relation to reduction, or the gear, the only possibility, were chosen accurately for maximum performance. It's like a safe. To get to the best result, there's only one combination of numbers between the propeller turn and the gearing down. We've seen that we're talking about a very special boat, but we haven't yet examined the most important characteristic, speed. Pay attention now, this is serious stuff. Pedal to the metal. Incredible, even when we're planing, it lies flat on the water. 
The nose doesn't go up like other race boats do for reasons obviously linked to their sporty designs. Okay, okay up to 30 miles. Now we raise the trim. I've just touched the accelerator and we're going 40 knots an hour. Fantastic. I'm pulling up the flaps. I don't think we need them. It's going perfectly. Acceleration is amazing. Well, it couldn't be anything else going this fast. I thought the propellers they chose were too long, but they do play. Guys, we're going 59 knots very easily. And look, we're just doing a nice turn under the skyscrapers of Miami Beach. I could pretend to be a bit bored doing a turn at 50 knots, as if the boat wasn't that brilliant. But it's just not true. It's fantastic. Right, I'm going to push it just that little bit more. You just slide on these five steps that they've designed, and contrary to other sporty boats, They've put them in the Prodia section. It's great. No one does this, but it really is useful because I can feel the boat landing softly on the water, even though it's so long. The water just slips off the hull. That's why it goes so fast. 60 knots. I don't need to correct with the trim and flaps. The boat goes by itself. Remember, this is a pleasure boat, but look how fast it's going. Incredible, no? It's perfectly balanced, which means that they haven't just designed the hull well, which is very deep, by the way. It's got a 24 degree dead rise, but it also means that they've adjusted the weight correctly. You never need to touch the helm, even when the waves are coming side on. It sticks to the route. It's fantastic. I don't need to correct it. You guide it with the racing type stern leg. Now, I don't know this boat, so I can't exaggerate too much, especially as it's the first time I've driven it. But of course, someone like Mike Fiore, the founder of the boatyard, knows it very well, because he's designed it and tested it out. He's the one responsible for the fact it performs the way it does. Mike Fiore is a great pilot who's won many and diverse competitions and races. He's even a world champion, and with this very boat, he has got up to 97 miles an hour. So let's see what we can do. It's a 37-foot boat, which is just 9 foot wide. It weighs less than 4,000 kilos, and we've more than 1,000 horsepower here, which means there's a weight-power ratio of 4 kilos per horsepower, even a bit better than that. The engines are staggered or phased one against the other, so the propellers are very close to each other, pushing almost as if they're one, which of course is a great advantage in terms of speed. We're going for max revs now, 5,200. Give it a bit of trim. If it's rising and getting lighter, super light. Ninety miles an hour. Okay, there's just one more wish of mine. Let's not go any faster. This will do. High speeds, incredible acceleration, perfect hold, excellent attitude. All the emotions that you can hope to have when you're racing a Ferrari 458. But on the sea, well, that's quite a different sensation. And then there's the way it's different from a car, in that when you've finished racing, you can relax.